Hello, welcome. My name is Sharon Whitefawn, and today we are going to do neuro yoga. We're going to bring the mind and the body together, but we're going to bring them together for a higher purpose, and a higher purpose being rewiring the brain. We have a tendency to focus on negativity in our world, in our culture, in our lives. That is, um, it's a survival technique actually that the brain, or it's a tactic that the brain just naturally does. It focuses on the negative for survival purposes. So the brain, the amygdala, specifically the reptilian brain stem, is about keeping us alive, keeping us safe. So we're looking for anything that's dangerous, you know, and that's the negativity. But we don't have really that much negativity. This is a lot of perceived um, negativity or perceived fear or perceived uh, threat is the word I'm looking for. It's often a perceived threat. So in the news, they just blast us with negativity. And a lot of times the, thing they, the things that they report on the news never really come to fruition. But regardless, we heard it, we attached to it, we've got that fear in us now, and it just causes the immune system to break down and it causes us to focus more and more on negativity. So we're gonna be very conscious using the neocortex, the frontal part of our brain, to talk to the rest of the brain and say, calm down. We're gonna focus on something positive today, which can be very challenging for a lot of us, a lot of people. So we are really going to make that conscious effort to focus on something positive, and we're gonna do that through repeating certain words to ourselves, or little mini sentences, short little sentences, that we're gonna repeat over and over and over again as we do this practice. So as we're moving the body, we're in, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We're giving information to different parts of the body, to different cells, to the heart, to the lungs, to where everything gets to calm down and not just calm down, but almost get um, excited, if you will, about the positive things that are in your life that you already know that maybe you don't tap into often enough. So the first one that we're gonna think about as we extend the arms up overhead, I want you to breathe in. And as you come down into a nice little forward fold, and you don't have to go real far, you know, you can just go a little bit. Inhale those arms up, breathing in. Exhale and go down, and just keep on doing that. Maybe you can go down further and further each time you go down, getting more and more of a stretch. So obviously we're thinking about the body. Soften your knees, contract your abdominal muscles a little bit to support your back. But while you're doing this, all of this movement and all of this protection of the spine and the knees and the neck, we're inhaling also. So it's a lot to think about. I understand all of this. But more so, I want you to focus on the thoughts of gratitude. So when you're breathing out, think gratitude. When you're breathing in, think gratitude. You could perhaps do a small little sentence that says, I am grateful. And then start thinking about things that you're grateful for. Grateful for this back. Even if it is a little achy, it's still working. Grateful for your knees, even if they are a little bit achy, they're still holding us up, right? So many things in your lives to be grateful for. Breathing in, I am grateful. Exhale, I am grateful. Breathing in, really feel the feeling, the emotion of gratitude. Maybe you'll think about a family member or a friend or a pet for which you are grateful or your job for which you are grateful even if those things can be stressful. Family can be stressful, careers can be stressful, being in school can be stressful, having pets can be stressful, but we're not focusing on that. We're saying, you know what? In spite of all of that, I am still grateful to have what I have. So bring that in, bring it up, really cultivate the feelings and the thoughts of gratitude. Yes, and then just feel more exuberance coming into your body, more energy, more light. Beautiful, and the next time out, we're gonna stay up, and we're gonna stay with gratitude. Exhale to one side, I am grateful for these bones. Inhale, center, I am grateful for these muscles. Instead of focusing on the body's not doing what it used to do 20 years ago, 10 years ago, yesterday, <laughs> it's okay. But be grateful for what you have here and now. Let's focus on that. Inhaling, I am, exhale, grateful. Breathing in, gratitude. Breathing out gratitude. And just let your mind get flooded with all of the things that you're grateful for. So I call this neuro yoga. We're rewiring the brain while we're moving our bodies. We're affirming positivity. 
into the mind, into the muscles, and into our lives. This spills out into our lives. When you focus more and more on things you're grateful for and positivity, that spills out into your family, into your workplace, into your whole life. Coming back to center, bring those arms down. Nice work, roll your shoulders. If there is anything negative or stressful that you're holding on to, imagine it's just rolling down your arms, rolling down your back, just melting into the earth. Open your heart. Nice, beautiful. So we're gonna inhale the arms up again, and then just lower them down in front of your heart center. And if you really wanna stay connected to your heart, you could take your thumbs and just lightly press them into your heart center. Breathing in here, exhaling down. So we're gonna focus on the heart center, obviously, physically, in the body, but emotionally, spiritually, mentally. You could inhale coming up saying, I am, and exhale, sinking down into your chair pose, loving. Keep your focus on your heart. I am loving, I am loving. And if that's a difficult sentence for whatever reason, it's okay. You could just say love. You could think love. You can say it out loud. Either way, when you're doing this, make sure your stomach is engaged and try not to lose it in the lower back. Tuck that hip under. Thinking loving thoughts. Allowing for loving feelings to come in. You could bring to mind someone or something that you love. Hmm. That should make you smile. <laughs> I'm thinking of my family right now, my grandson especially, he just called me. So whoever it is, whatever it is that you love, let those feelings for that person or that thing, whatever it is, to just flood your mind. Let your brain be washed by love. Let your heart open in the loving, compassionate way. Inhaling up and exhaling down. Beautiful, wonderful, loving thoughts and feelings. Focus on that. Next time down, let's stay down and twist to one side. Maybe open your arms. Maybe it's too much to come down that low and you just want to put your hands on your thighs and do a little gentle twist. It doesn't matter. What matters most right now is connecting the brain to the body and to the emotion and the thoughts of love. Self-love. Very important. Self-love. You know, it begins with us first. Come back to center. Open your loving heart as you press those hip bones forward a little bit. Lift your ribs. Breathe, and we're coming back down again. That little bit of a pelvic tilt will su support your lower back and twist to the other side, whether you wanna open your arms or not, whether you wanna just put your hands on your thighs or not, you find it. But stay with that loving thought and feeling and energy. Self-love. You would be demonstrating self-love if you don't push so hard that you injure yourself. You demonstrate self-love by holding back when you need to, and by being a little more assertive in your yoga practice in life when that's necessary as well. So we're gonna walk, slide the hands down these straight, strong legs. Just go ahead down, 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 until your body, some part of your body will stop you. It might be your hips, it might be your knees, it might be your back, whatever. Wherever it is that you get stopped by your body, stop there, engage your stomach muscles, please and breathe in loving energy, breathe out loving thoughts, thinking and feeling love, self-love, unconditional love, however you interpret that, make it your own, loving thoughts, loving feelings, being loving to your body, being loving with your thoughts. And then we're gonna walk those hands out, coming onto all, uh, yeah, coming into a high plank. That might be difficult for you, so you would rest your knees. If being in pl plank, high plank, is really causing your body pain, well, that's not very loving, is it? So, let the knees rest, okay? But still engage your stomach muscles. Use those core muscles. Breathing here, we're focusing on strength. And not strength and power to overcome um, an obstacle so much as the strength of mind to remain loving. Breathing. Notice if you're being loving to your body right now. If you're being lazy, that's not very loving. If you're pushing too hard, that's not very loving. If you know you should be on your knees, but you're not, that's not very loving. 
So stay with that. And whether you're on your knees or not, we're gonna come to the side plank and really let your heart bloom open. Unconditional self-love. Knowing you can always rest one knee, you can always rest both knees. Just don't drop your hips down. Like really use this core strength of the body and use the core strength of your mind. So returning to high plank. Again, you can be on your knees here. I'll demonstrate how it is on the knees. Just switch to the other side. Notice the hip didn't drop down. We're still up, we're still strong. Strong in our thoughts and feelings of unconditional self-love. And we'll come back to high plank. And then rest your knees on the floor and we're gonna just move the spine. Cat pose, breathing out. Cow pose, breathing in. Exhale as you round the spine. Inhale as you drop the belly. Continue to do that breathing, moving the spine. I am gentle, right here. I am gentle. So it's important to be strong when we need to be strong and it's important to be gentle when we need to be gentle. Learn to discern. In Neuro Yoga, we rewire the brain to perceive things in a more enlightened way, to perceive things in a more healthy way. I am gentle with my thoughts, being gentle with your body. So another way that that could show up is you're focusing on something positive and then something negative creeps into your mind, right? And we could get mad at ourselves. Oh, why do you always do that? Okay, that's not very gentle. So <laughs> be gentle with your thoughts and with your mind and with your body and with others. Feeling gentle yet strong. And then we're gonna sit back into child's pose and just drop your head till it rests on the floor. And if that's not happening, you could stack your fists and rest your head on your fists or maybe use a pillow, but just start rocking here. Rock, unless that doesn't feel right for your body, then obviously don't rock. And your knees can be together or they could be apart. It's whatever feels right for your body. Stay in child's pose and think, I am humble. I am humble. Drop your armor, okay? Here's a great place to surrender and just release and let go. You're safe to release to really let yourself rest on Mother Earth. Humility, breathing in, I am humble. And if it's difficult to say I am humble, just think thoughts and feel the emotion of humility. Humility is really an aspect of self-love. So we're gonna come on to the belly now. Rest your hips, rest your forearms. If this is too high, too much, and it's hurting your back, just walk the hands out a little bit, okay? Bring your two big toes to touch if you can. Make it right for you. Gently press your hip bones into the floor, into the mat, and lift your heart. And here we're gonna think the words and the, feel the feeling of I am compassionate. Or just compassion, if it's too much to say I am compassionate. Consider compassion. Compassionate with your mind. Compassionate with your body. Compassion. Introduce those thoughts and those feelings. Compassion. Let compassion come into your back. Breathe it into your heart. Breathe compassion into any part of your body that's feeling struggling or stressed or tense or tight. Compassion. Soothe it, calm your body and your mind with compassion. Mm, just savor it, savor it. Don't rush it, man, this is the good stuff. So the neurons in your brain are absorbing all of this information, so we don't wanna rush it, and that's why we stay with it um, for an extended period of time. And repeatedly, so even after your yoga practice today, um, I encourage you thinking these types of thoughts and conjuring up these types of feelings, compassion, humility, gentleness, love, 
gratitude. The research about gratitude, well, I'll talk about that later. Roll your toes under, slide your hands back. We're gonna push up and into a downward facing dog. Press those heels down, reach your tailbone up, good. And here we'll say, I am loyal. Downward facing dog, the dog is about loyalty. If you have a dog or you recognize how dogs are very loyal to their owners, I'd like for you to consider being loyal to yourself, to your health, to your body, to your brain. Reach that tailbone up, press the heels down. I know we're holding these for a while, so for some of you, you might want to release the pose, which is fine. Don't release the thought. What does loyalty to yourself look like? If you can take one leg up, go for it. Being loyal to your practice, being loyal to you for your health. Lower that leg down and switch, we'll do the other side. Reach that leg up. The foot that's on the floor, let that heel go down. Think about being loyal to yourself, first and foremost. And then we're gonna lower this foot down and walk your hands and feet together. Soften the knees as you roll yourself up. Go ahead and roll yourself up. Very nice. <sighs> Good. All right, so walk to the front of your mat. I'm gonna turn this way for this. Walk to the front of your mat and take a, a large, very generous step back with one of your feet. It doesn't matter, we're gonna do both. Let that front knee bend and the back leg remain straight but not locked. So we're doing warrior one. For those of you that know warrior one, go into warrior one. While you're holding your warrior one, start to think about what it is you are a warrior for. So in your pose, you could say, I'm a warrior for self-love, or I'm a warrior for peace, or I'm a warrior for compassion, or whatever that is. You might be a warrior for education. So educate yourself and the thoughts and the feelings of what that means to stand strong for something, but not fight for something. So in our culture, often warrior is a fighter, but in our practice, a warrior is what it is that you stand for. You're a warrior when you stand strong for something. So stand strong in your strength and know what it is you are a warrior for here. Breathing in, I am a warrior for whatever it is you're a warrior for. You choose, you get to choose, that's a beautiful thing. So that front knee is bent, that back leg is straight. If that hurts, then just soften up a little bit. If you can go deeper, go deeper. And in warrior two, we just open up those arms, still gazing forward, draw this hip back, the back leg, draw that hip back, the back shoulder, draw it back. And stay with your warrior wisdom. You already know what you're a warrior for. Stay with it. Remind the brain. Feel what it feels like to stand in your power for that which you are a warrior. And then we're just gonna let the forearm lightly touch the thigh. This arm is really reaching up or maybe overhead, whatever feels right for your body. But remember, you're connected to your inner warrior as you're doing this. Some of you might be able to bring that hand all the way down to the floor. And maybe take the arm all the way overhead, extended angle, whatever you like. Bound angle, you just bring the hands behind you. But you're finding the position that's right for you Mostly rewiring the brain, staying connected to something positive. Whatever it is you're a warrior for. We're gonna come up from there and then just pivot your feet. Pivot your feet so now you're on the other side. So the other leg is bent now. Opposite leg is straight. Take your hips, turn them over this front leg with the arms up, warrior one and just really stay connected. And maybe you're a warrior for a lot of things, so you can incorporate another concept or another thing for which you stand strong. Don't fight. Stay with it. I am a warrior for peace. Feel peace when it's coming into your body. I am a warrior for love, if that's what you're saying. Then feel loving thoughts and feelings coming in. Think about that. Make sure what you're doing with your body is loving or peaceful or whatever it is 
that you know you're a warrior for, make sure you're really integrating that into your practice. And I know we're holding these for a while. That's intentional. Warrior two. The neural pathways that are created in our brains um, got there over time. So if there's some negative neural pathways and we want to create positive neural pathways, it takes time. It takes time. It's a practice. Just as long as it took for something to get there, it might take just that long to erase it or create this new positive, life-affirming way of thinking, living, and being. Bring it into every cell of your body as you breathe in. Breathe it into your lungs. What is it you're a warrior for? And then we're going to let that forearm lightly touch. Whether the arm is up, this is all about you, knowing what's right for you. Breathing. Keep that thought. You'll notice, maybe, some of you, while you're doing this, that the mind reels into another thought and adventure of some other time and place. Bring it back. Just bring it back. Say, nope, I'm rewiring the brain right now. Getting all of this information downloaded into all the cells. Remember, you can go into a full angle, bound angle, whatever you like. Whatever's right for your body, be there. My hip doesn't want to do that. And I'm a warrior for peace. And I want to have peace in my joints. So I'm not going to push it. Nice. And then we're going to come up from there. And turn your body again over this front leg. And just drape your body over the extended front leg. Release the shoulders. Relax the hips. Come down as far as you need to or want to. And if you have like a step stool or a block and you want to prop yourself up on something, do that. Wherever it's right for your body. And here I just want you to release. We're going to take a moment to release. Sometimes the brain can get really busy and caught up and muddled. So we're going to release any brain fog, any brain stuff. Here, just let it drop out the top of your head. Soften both of your knees, step back with the front foot and bring the other one forward and then straighten them out again and keep your upper body relaxed. Let it release over this extended leg. Let the shoulders relax. And if there's any negativity occurring in the brain surrounding any part of this practice, go ahead and just let that drip out the top of your head. Be done with it. Breathing, breathing, sinking deeper and deeper into the stretch. And then we'll soften both knees once again, step back into a high plank again, hold it, I am strong. And then we're going to rest the knees into child's pose, I am humble. And then onto the belly once again. And before we did Sphinx Pose, and this time we're going to try to go into Cobra, if that works for your body. Just slide your hands back. You can stay in Sphinx if that's better. We're going to inhale up a little bit and exhale down all the way. Inhale up a little bit more maybe and exhale all the way down. Keep doing that. Inhaling up and exhaling down, okay? And consider, if this is Cobra Pose, Consider what snakes do. They shed their skin. So you could think of the old negative thoughts uh, and the fear and whatever's been in your brain. Imagine that you're shedding that layer and taking on this new, fresh layer of positivity. Okay, so just as you're doing that, contemplate that. What can you shed? What is something that you think or feel or do that really is not serving you anymore? One of these times when you get up, I want you to just hold it for a few breaths and really contemplating what is it that you can shed? What can you let go of? What habit pattern or thought process can you just be done with now? Imagine yourself slithering out of that old way as you return back to child's pose 
and breathe in humility. Breathe out humility. Very nice. And with thoughts of letting go of the past and coming into a fresh new start, let's um, do a couple of these cat-cow. Just make sure the spine is limbered up well enough for this next stretch. And this next pose is really about dumping off the back, dumping off the brain, all that old stuff, that old stuff, those old neural pathways. So I'm going to start with my right hand. Turn your right hand upward and just start sliding it, sliding it, sliding it until your ear and your shoulder rest on the floor. And if that's not happening for you, again, you could put a pillow under your head, you could put a pillow under your shoulder, whatever you need to do. But if you can get your ear and your shoulder to the floor, go for it. And if not, you're using a prop of sorts. So you could stay right here, or you could take that arm up and imagine this is like a dump truck and just dump all that garbage off your back. Dump all that garbage out of your brain. Dump all that garbage out of your life and just breathe in the liberation of what happens after you dump all that stuff. Breathe. Imagine what it is you're letting go of, what it is you are dumping, not to get caught up in it. Don't get caught up in it mentally or emotionally or physically. Just say, you know what? It's garbage, I'm dumping it. And the arm that's up in the air or whatever's up higher, press that shoulder back if you can, breathe. And then we'll float this hand down, return to all fours, and then again, limber up that spine, just keep it moving. I'm gonna switch sides so that you can see how it is on this side. We're gonna now take the left hand, come to a flat back, take the left hand, slide it, slide it, slide it, until the ear and the shoulder are resting on the floor or on your prop, whatever you've selected there. Okay, and then here goes the dump truck. I like to call this dump truck pose. <laughs> so just dump it off, whatever it is. Get rid of all that stuff. Get rid of that stuff. Ah, oh, yeah. Feel how good it is. Just the thought of unloading garbage. We become like hoarders of garbage, <laughs> of negativity, hoarders. Right? So imagine what it is to clear. It's good feng shui. <laughs> Let it go. Open up. Ah, oh, yeah. Very nice. Breathe liberation into your heart, into your mind. A fresh new start. Every breath in our lives is an opportunity to start again. People say, oh, you get a whole other day tomorrow to, you know, start again. No, you get a whole now to start again. So coming back to all fours, we'll do a cat pose and a cow pose. Keep everything limber and open and fluid. And then the next time in cat pose, let's hold it. Roll those toes under, return to downward facing dog. And then figure out which one is your right foot and bring it to the ceiling. And then we're gonna bring the right knee to the right hand, okay? Right knee to right hand, did you see that? So if your heel is in the groin area, just move it a little bit so you can drop your hips down into that space. This is pigeon. It's another one where it might feel good to rock initially until you find your set point. Release those, those um, tensions there. Release them. And then get to a place where you can be still and allow for gravity to have your hips. I surrender. How about that? Consider what it is to surrender. Surrender the old stuff. Surrender those old habit patterns, those old thoughts. Surrender negativity. Well, please surrender negativity. Do that for yourself. And it might be enough. You might want to come out of this and return to child's pose, but some of you might be able to go further and come on down to your forearms or come all the way down to your foreheads touching the floor. But wherever you are, you're knowing that it's right for you, okay? Surrender. Surrender to what is instead of what we hope or wish would happen. Nice. And then replace your hands shoulder width apart. We're going to roll the toes under back there. Pick that leg up. 
And we're gonna take the left leg now to the ceiling, reach it, stretch it while the other heel goes down. And then we're taking this left knee to the left hand. And then again, if the heel is in the groin, release that a little bit. And try as best you can to square your hips up with the floor. So you're not dropped over on the side, right? Square those hips up with the floor. And breathe. Surrender. So in snake pose and cobra pose, we shed the old skin, the old stuff. And now we're surrendering to the new stuff, the possibilities of miracles and wonder, of joy and inner peace. And again, remember you can come down onto the forearms if that's better for your body, or rest your forehead on the ground if that's better. Rock a little bit till you find that place, whatever you have to do. Honor your body. If you're in pain, obviously stop what it is you're doing, whether it's a mental pain, stop that thinking. Um, if it's a physical pain, stop that pose, the movement, whatever it is that you're doing. More so though, work the brain. Even if you're just sitting, uh, reclining on a couch, just keep saying, I surrender. And we're going to come up from there. And we're just going to take that back leg and swing it around. Swing it around. Sit cross-legged if that's okay for you. Or not. You can unwind your legs if you need to. But we're going to just start to move the rib cage around in a nice big circle. We often hold on to so much stuff mentally and physically. And all that does is bind us and create more pain and more angst and more suffering. As much as you can, release the shoulders, release the hips, release the brain to the possibility of miracles. Miracles happen. Switch sides, you don't have to be religious <laughs> to have miracles happen. Open your heart to the possibilities. And then we'll sit up nice and tall, extend one arm up and one arm out, and just start walking those hands over, or this hand that's on the floor, creep it out like a spider, just let it crawl. Don't collapse down, lift up with joyfulness. Lift up. So go out just enough so that one butt cheek came up off the floor. Go ahead, let it come up off the floor a little bit, right? So now you have some space between your butt cheek and the floor. Press down into that space while the ribs move away from the hip. Breathe, release. I am open here, we're open. Opening the side body, of course, but also opening the mind. Positivity is everywhere. Let the muscles of your face relax, you could even smile. It feels good to be open. And then we're coming up from there. Creepy crawl those fingers back in. And then the other side's going to do it. So crawl those fingers out. Keeping both arms straight. Up with the rib cage. Keep on going. Keep on going until your butt cheek came up off the floor a tiny bit. And now press down into that space while the ribs move. And you're opening mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually open. I am open to wonderful possibilities. I am open to more health. I am open to liberation from the past that bound me. I am open. And returning center once again, creepy crawl those fingers in, in, in and we're gonna open our hearts. So if you can, just hold your fingers behind or hold at your wrists or maybe at your forearms or maybe at your elbows. One of those places is gonna be right for you. Find it. Let your shoulders drop down and then just bring your shoulder blades together a little bit. Nothing about this is forceful. Stay with your open heart. So consider your open heart. What does that mean to have an open heart? Many of us want to protect our hearts and we've been in um, 
relationships or situations that were painful and little by little over time as we get older often people close up their hearts right and they'll open up a little bit here and a little bit there but consider opening your heart right now and whatever that means to you what does that mean to you in your life today to open your heart relax the shoulders take out any stress or angst or or tensions around the open heart physically literally but more so mentally emotionally and spiritually breathing in I am open my heart is open relax the jaw relax the muscles of the face relax so much so that you almost be begin to smile the Mona Lisa smile of contentment And then we're gonna take this lengthened neck, so do make sure your neck is lengthened, and circle it around. And here, I have positive thoughts. Or you could just say positive thoughts, or positivity. But we are rewiring the brain, creating a neural pathway so deep and so strong that positivity is your natural go-to. Relax the jaw. Change direction. I practice positive thinking. Maybe that would work for you. Any short little sentence that includes the possibility of positivity being the primary focus of the brain, the primary function of your neurons, specifically the neocortex, speaks to the rest of the brain and the body. I can remain positive in spite of stressful situations. And then release your arms and roll those shoulders. Yes, feel a little more energy coming in. Beautiful. Take one of your arms out, it doesn't matter which one. And then we're gonna cross the elbows to elbows. If you can, that might be difficult for some. And either way, we're gonna bend both elbows. So whether your elbows are touching or not, you're still bending them. If you are elbow to elbow, maybe you can wrap. These are eagle arms. Drop your shoulders, lift your chest. We're separating the shoulder blades. Breathe into the space between your shoulder blades. Eagle arms. So in the native way we say eagle is the bird that flies closest to creator. So imagine seeing things from their highest perspective. A lot of times our stressfulness comes from zeroing in on that one little negative thing or zeroing in on that one problem, so to speak. But if we were so hyper-focused on this one little aspect of whatever the situation is, and we draw back and we pull back and we try to see as best we can through the eyes of, of Creator, God, Takashalana, whomever, if you believe in a higher power or not, um, it doesn't matter really just to try to observe things from the highest perspective from the highest vantage point And then unwind your arms and then rewind them go the other way So now the other arms on top the shoulders still drop down the heart is still up and open And if there is a situation in your life that is causing you um, some stressfulness right now see if maybe you can rise higher and higher instead of hyper fixating on one little aspect of it see if you could consider it from a different point of view, from a different vantage point. Breathing in, breathing out, releasing, relinquishing all that heaviness, unwind your arms, and once again, roll those shoulders around. Very nice. And so unwind your legs, please. Make them nice and straight. Shake them out, shake them out. 
and then slide your hands down your legs wherever they go they don't have to go to your ankles there's nothing magical about your hands reaching your feet there's nothing magical about that the magic is knowing your body and knowing when to stop and honoring that place and savoring that sweet delicious stretch find it engage your stomach muscles because that will support your lower back so wherever it is right for your body to be you're going to honor that another thing that trips us up in life is that we uh, find ourselves comparing ourselves to other people uh, don't do that just stop it <laughs> that's all i'm going to say about that just stop it you are born to stand out. Let yourself be the unique being that you are and embrace it. So here's about you embracing your uniqueness. So for some of us, we're gonna be here, some here, some here, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you're embracing your uniqueness as you inhale and then exhale any tightness. So as you come into a forward fold, exhale any tightness that surrounds you honoring yourself as being the beautiful, unique, wonderful being that you are, that you were created to be. Let yourself be that individual. Inhaling, lifting, stretching, opening to the possibilities and on the exhale, folding and releasing whatever might be holding you bound to that old way. We're creating new thoughts, new feelings, positive life, positive health, physical and mental. Stay with the, the, the breath and the movement. Stay with it. And the next time up, we're going to stay up. Roll all the way up. And just take one of your legs and cross it over. Doesn't matter which one. But whatever leg crossed over, so in my case, it was my left leg crossed over. So it's going to be my right arm that hugs it. So if your left leg is crossed over and it's bent, hug it with your right. And vice versa. Otherwise. <laughs> Got that? <laughs> so lift your chin, lift your chest, lengthen your spine, press those shoulders down, and just get a good spinal twist here. Get a really good thorough spinal twist. Think of your spine of all the vertebrae as steps of a spiral staircase. And imagine twisting each one of those gently, lovingly. Lengthen the spine, drop the shoulders, lengthen your neck as you look over that shoulder or in the direction of looking over that shoulder. Breathe. And the arm that's hugging that leg is hugging it with enthusiasm. Pull it in. Hug it like you love it. Bring it in. And then we're gonna unwind there and switch legs. Shake out a little bit, you know, before you go ahead and do that. Now switch legs. So now it's my right leg that's over, so it's my left leg that's gonna hug it. Pull it in. And then again, with a nice long spine, looking over that shoulder, draw that knee in as much as it will come to your torso. Every vertebrae twisting, lower back, middle back, upper back, neck, breathe. And then we'll return to center once again. Unwind these legs, shake them out again. Let some of that energy flow. And then we're coming onto our backs. So lie on your back, take your time. Bring your arms alongside your body and tuck your chin. And now tuck your pelvis under. So we're not really flattening the spine onto the mat, but we're moving in the direction of a more lengthened spine. So walk your shoulders down, lengthen your neck, a little bit of a pelvic tilt will get your lower back pressing and probably your stomach muscles contracted. Breathe here. Relax those shoulders. Very nice. And keep that little bit of a pelvic tilt while you bring one knee into the chest. And it might be enough just to hold the knee, but maybe you want to extend that leg. Maybe your body's feeling like, yeah, I think I want to stretch that leg out. And we're working the leg toward becoming straight, although at first it might not be. It might be just a little bit, and that's fine. Press through the heel. Open up. Remember, you're honoring your uniqueness. You're embracing your uniqueness. 
So I still have that pelvic tilt. We're gonna put a little body weight in the foot that's on the floor and really curl that hip under. And now we're gonna bring the head towards the knee if your leg is extended. Relax the shoulders. Open here and breathe. And so now is a great time to incorporate your own. You know what's going on in your life. You know where, what part or what area of your, your progress, your growth, that you need a little extra attention on. So maybe it is self-compassion, maybe it is love. I don't know what it is for you, but explore what it is for you because it's really important that awareness is crucial. We cannot change something that's not working for us if we're not even noticing the something that isn't working for us. So. We're switching, but keep that little bit of a pelvic tilt. Take that leg. Well, first we'll do the knee. And when you bring that knee and it should curl the hip, well, it might, I don't say it should. It's different for everybody, but it might curl that hip and you know bring that butt up a little bit maybe. And then work towards straightening out that leg or not. You might not need to, and you might not want to do that pelvic tilt. If that's hurting your back, you're gonna stop, right? Because you're honoring your body. You're self-loving, you're self-compassionate, so. <laughs> And I'm proud of you. I'm very happy that you're here. So you're finding where it's right for you. Breathing. A little bit of body weight in the foot that's on the floor will lift that buttocks up. Bringing the head towards the knee. All of these things just deepen the stretch. That's all. So you don't have to go here if this is enough of a stretch for you. If that's as deep as your body is needing today, then that's where it's important for you to be today. When you're ready, release all of that to the ground. Bring both knees in. Start circling the knees around any direction. And then circle them in the opposite direction. Deep belly breaths. And then we're gonna grab hold of either the backs of the knees, the knees will come apart, the feet will come apart, or maybe you'll hold on closer towards your ankles, or maybe you can hook your big toes. This is happy baby pose. We're gonna rock a little bit from side to side. And consider the trust that babies have. So while you're here, practice trusting in yourself, trusting in your intuition, trusting in your inner wisdom, trusting that you know already what's right for you. Sometimes we really do know what's right for us, but we choose not to do it subconsciously or unconsciously, maybe that's fear. But let's consider trusting and then honoring what it is we know we need to do. So wherever you are, work your legs toward becoming straighter. They may or may not really go straight. And then bring the heels farther and farther apart. Just looking to open up the hips and the inner thigh. Hopefully you're not bumping into a wall and being restricted as I am here, but it's all good. Open the hips, relax the shoulders. Let the weight of your relaxed arms assist in this stretch here. Bringing those feet together, bend your knees. Once again, we're gonna hug those knees in and then come down to a straight body here. Stretch your fingers in one direction, your arms are stretching, your toes in the opposite direction, your legs are stretching. Stretching so much so that your lower back lifts up off the floor. Stay there and breathe. And breathe out, release all of that. And we're gonna roll onto one side. Keep the one arm over top, roll onto one side. Bring this heel towards your buttocks. And that might be difficult. Maybe you're gonna hold onto your pant leg, or maybe you have a, a necktie or a strap or something like that, that you can hook the foot. But ultimately, we're looking to draw the heel toward the buttocks in an effort to open up the front of the thigh. And try not to crunch forward like this as best you can. See how much of a straight line you can keep your body, and you'll get a little wobbly, and that's okay. From here, you might be able to roll forward and really lift up the knee, the chest, okay? Maybe not. But that's a, I'm showing you variations, you know, lots of options here. Yoga is the science of life. And in yoga, we have lots of options. In life, we have lots of options. Don't forget that, that's so important. So we're gonna switch sides, come back to center, come back to center.
straighten up, stretch out like we did before, lift and lengthen, stay there, don't move. I'm gonna switch sides just because it'll be easier for me to speak this way. Okay, nice. And then we're coming onto the side and we're grabbing hold of the other foot now. Or pants leg. Or quite honestly, if you don't have a strap and you just wanna rest that foot there, that would be okay. Or reach it back, that might work as well. Options, variations. In yoga, just as in life, it's important to make modifications sometimes. Adjust. So maybe you can lift all of this up, maybe not, it's okay. Maybe it's enough just to be here. You're finding what's right for you in yoga and in life and you're honoring that uniqueness. Not comparing yourselves to anybody else. And don't get me wrong, of course it's okay to aspire, but gently, lovingly, compassionately, humbly, so we're going to once again be on our backs, heels close to the buttocks. Inhale the arms up overhead, the hips come up off the floor. And on the exhale, replace each one of these vertebrae back down one by one onto your mat. Continue to do that, inhaling the arms all the way up, stretching and rolling down. Continue to do that, please. And really try to connect to the breath and how the breath picks your back up off the floor. So it's not like we're picking the back up off the floor and then taking a breath in. Make that such a united movement. Breath to body, mind to muscle. So in yoga, this pose is called bridge. And we're gonna hold bridge after we do a few more of these. You're not gonna hold bridge if it's hurting your body. You're gonna just release it but it's not gonna change what happens in the mind, regardless of what's going on in your body. When you come to this bridge that we're gonna hold, which will be the next one, inhaling up. So you're only coming up as high as is right for your body. You're releasing it if you need to. But I want you to consider what bridge might mean for you to get from where you are today, mentally, physically, emotionally, and or spiritually, to where it is you want to go in the future, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So what would be a bridge? What would bridge the gap between where you are now and where you want to be? Just consider that. Don't get all wrapped up in your head about it so much so, as knowing that there are bridges in yoga, there are bridges in life. There are things that can help us get from one place to the next place that are where we wanna go, and to recognize what that is in your life. A bridge could be reaching out to a certain individual. A bridge could be signing up for a particular course. A bridge could be a practice, a meditative practice or a spiritual practice. So if you're aspiring to move forward in your life, what would be a bridge for you? When you're ready, roll out of your bridge, if you haven't rolled out already. And again, we're gonna draw those knees into the chest and then move them around in a circle. Go ahead and give that lower back a nice little massage. You could do this with a little energy, a little enthusiasm. Or you could do it slowly, whatever's right for your body. Change direction, releasing the shoulders, releasing any tightness in the face, any tightness in the brain, most definitely release that. and then draw them in, hug them like you love them. Ah, oh, yes. And then we're gonna release all of this to the floor. Arms drop down, legs straighten out, unless that's not right for your back, you can keep bent knees for sure. Maybe you wanna prop something under your knees. It doesn't matter to me, but it should matter to you. Make sure that you're doing what is right for your body. And when you're here in yoga, this is corpse pose for Shavasana. Extending the arms alongside the body. Walk your heels away from your hips. Walk your head away from your shoulders. Walk your shoulders down away from your ears. And so hopefully you just got a little bit taller. You got a little longer there, a little more elongated. And then let your toes and your ankles relax. Let your knees soften. Let your shoulders just drop into the floor. 
Let your fingers be tingly with relaxation as you focus on the breath. Breathe in through the nose. Breathe out through the nose. And while you're doing this breath work, you may notice that the belly rises and falls with every breath. Allow for all of the muscles of your face to relax. Allow for all the muscles in your entire body to just relinquish and let go right now. Let any tightness in your joints release. We're going to let tension die in corpse pose. We're focusing on the death of tension. Yes, I said it the death of tension. Death is not a bad thing, especially when it's our tensions that are dying. Let them die. Let it go. Watch it dissolve with every breath. Watch the tensions in your body dissolve, whether they're in the muscles or the joint. Check your face, check your ears, check your eyebrows. Where might there be tension that we need to just let go of? Let it dissolve, let it dissipate breath by breath. When we release tightnesses in the body, there's an empty pocket now that's left. So now we want to refill that pocket. So if you let go of tension in your muscles, what can you refill that space with? How about positivity? How about self-love? How about gentleness? Think of something positive that once you let go of that tightness in your lower back, for example, let's just say it's lower back tension, Breathe out any tightness in your lower back, watch it dissolve, and then replace uh, something there. Give something back to your lower back, right? Peace, maybe. Calmness, maybe. Maybe loving energy. The same true is true, the same is true for the mind, for the brain, right? So if we've let go of some negativity, what are we going to replace it with? What positive thought? What is going to be your go-to? So for example, if automatically getting stressed out or fearful, I'll use fear, for example, if your automatic response to any situation or news or something is fearful, relinquish the fear. And what would you replace that with? What will be your go-to? Consider trust. Trusting that the universe will balance this all out. I don't need to get all worked up about this thing. I've lived long enough to see that most things do work themselves out. So maybe for you it would be trust or, you know, explore. What are you going to replace that negativity with in your mind? So we let go of that negativity. We've got to fill that empty pocket with something positive. So we're cultivating positivity of the body. We are cultivating positivity of the mind. And this is our Noro Yoga practice rewiring the brain consciously, changing the body's chemistry. So stress will often um, create a situation in our bodies where we hold on to fat stores. Maybe we hold on to cortisol, maybe we hold on to toxicity, maybe. So we change the physiology of the body to be more healthy when we work with the mind. Consciously rewiring the brain for a better experience in yoga and in life. Let's go ahead and bring those feet together. 
Bring your hands behind your head, bend your knees, rock your knees from side to side. Just go ahead and loosen up there. Breathing deep belly breaths while you're doing that. Yes, do it with a sense of um, rejuvenation, of joy. Very nice. And then roll over to one side. It doesn't matter what side. And use your hands to come up. Use your arms. Use whatever you got to do. We want to keep everything kind of in that nice place of relaxation. And lengthen your spine as those shoulders drop down. And actually, if you want to stay laying on the floor, that's fine too. Breathing in, breathing out. Stay here with the eyes closed, with your muscles and your bones peaceful and calm. Still focusing on the soft, deep belly breaths. And while you're sitting here, just observe what's happening physically in your body. Just observe what's happening mentally in your mind. Just observe what's happening emotionally in your heart. Just observe. Don't get caught up in the story of any of those things. Just notice, become the silent observer. This helps us to create that awareness that we need, that a deeper sense of self-awareness. And it's in our self-awareness that we can better improve ourselves, that we can make those positive changes on the physical level, the mental level, emotional and or spiritual level. It's the self-awareness. So bringing yourself into a place of observing without judging, without criticizing, without comparing, observing with unconditional self-love. This is how we rewire our brains. This is how we change our lives to be wonderfully miraculous. It's not from the outside in, it's from the inside out. So I thank you very much for being here and for practicing this Noro Yoga with me today. This is a practice that I developed out of sheer necessity of getting out of deep stress, depression, uh, negativity, addictions, self-awareness, and then the ability to make these positive changes, rewiring your brain for positivity on every level. Mm -hmm. Peace, light, and love to all. Satnam. Namaste.